Continuing our discussion with PowerShell working with web, uh, here are some more review on some PowerShell commands that might be helpful. Uh, with PowerShell, recall that our syntax is uh, verb noun. So in this case, we're doing a, a get child item. Uh, that will let you basically get the subdirectories of a directory, which effectively gives you a um, file listing. So in this example, I'm saying uh, get child item. I'm giving it, here's a, a fun trick. If you give it a path and tell it uh, something like a regex uh, splat dot extension or splat dot text, uh, that path now is just going to look for your text files in that path. Uh, you can see I've also, in this example, given it a um, recursive and forcing it to, to go through and show even the hidden files. So um, give me all the files, all the text files in that path name and um, subdirectories. Here's another uh, good PowerShell uh, command that you can use. The import comma separated value or import CSV. Uh, it's as simple as just giving it um, the path to load it from and you can also give this command a delimiter so it doesn't have to be a comma uh, you can see down at the bottom uh, my example i'm using a, a tab delimiter so it's a tab separated values rather than comma separated values but in this instance uh, we're saying i'm taking a text file and i'm importing it into uh, a, a key value pair hash. So I'm importing uh, from that path with a tab delimiter into a new hash. Also recall the right host for displaying output to the screen. Um, you can see the syntax here. You've got um, no new lines, separators. You can change foreground and background color. So a lot of fun things you can do to make your um, output look nice. But in this example, uh, the simplest thing is just write host, and it's just giving some variables uh, printing out to the screen. Measure object, again, is a really handy PowerShell uh, tool. It just goes through and calculates uh, all sorts of different properties for the object, things like characters, words, and lines. Uh, so in this case, I want to just count how many items are in the array. You can just give it the array name uh, and, and say that you want to measure object and I'm limiting it to just the number of lines that I want displayed. Uh, another really handy PowerShell command is, is group object. So your group object is just going to um, sift through an object and take similar item um, properties and group them together and then display those similar, similar, similar objects on the screen or similar um, values if for an object. Sort object will go through an object and sort it by different values. Uh, so it's just for doing either uh, numeric or uh, alphabetic sorting, which is really nice. Uh, selecting object, you can have, if you're working on an object that contains many different values um, or has different uh, sub-objects, you can just select certain objects out of the object. So in this example, I'm saying, um, here's my server type array. I'm going to group the object. So it's going to put uh, items of, say, the same name together. And then I'm going to sort the object based on the count of each item. And then my final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select just the name and the count out of that object list, uh, even if there were other things. So if it say it had name, count, and date, I just want the name and the count selected. Uh, here's a handy PowerShell uh, tool. Uh, you, which you may or may not uh, want to use. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, instead of just writing host, you can actually write the progress of 
something that's happening in your PowerShell script. So PowerShell has a, a write progress, which lets you specify what activity it's working on, um, what the status is of that activity, and what the percent complete is. So you can see down at the bottom, I've, I've provided an example here. Uh, it's going to write progress, which makes a special portion of the screen to write the progress. The activity is working on um, some number of some number of websites. For the status, I want it to say percent complete and calculate the percent complete in the status. And then for the actual number of percent complete, uh, again, just go ahead and calculate it out. So again, this right progress will display in a special area of the screen and display it in a special way, um, the progress or status of your script. One of the things if you're writing progress, uh, because um, it's trying to write it to a special uh, formatted section of the screen, you might want to uh, suppress your errors. Uh, so what you can do is say, um, uh, error action preference just silently continue so instead of displaying the error it'll just continue uh, without displaying it. Uh, finally what I want to talk about and again this is an older method um, I really feel like there should be something with invoke web request uh, but right now the older method for for getting information is using the dot net system so you can see here I've got system.net and it's the HTTP web request. Basically that consists of um, creating the web request, setting the timeout, getting the response, and then getting the response header. Uh, what we're ultimately looking for is the server type out of the get response header. Um, so it's kind of a, a complicated uh, method of doing it. I really feel like there should be something better by using, say, invoke web request. Um, I, I hope you will be able to use something newer like invoke web request in your scripts. Uh, so here you see the example for the uh, .NET. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm using system.NET web request and I'm creating uh, a new uh, web request. Uh, I'm using the complete URL there with HTTP website um, and and dot well the website variable with the dot website object in it. I'm creating a timeout so it won't uh, hang on a website forever. That's that's being slow to respond, and then I'm sending a web response, which is my web request with the timeout and um, the URL and I'm going to do a get response. So it's going to get information out of that website and then it's going to close that response. What I'm going to then do is add to my um, new array of server types called my server type array uh, the web response that is the the output from the get response header, that server portion. So again, it's it's not as elegant as something um, newer like uh, invoke web request. Um, the invoke web request with PowerShell, all you need to do is just say, um, I'm going to make my new web request. I'm going to call it invoke web request. And I'm going to provide the the URI with um, my URI variable, and then I'm going to add to my server type array the web request that is just the headers portion of the web request, and of that header portion, just the server type of the header portion of the web request. So. Again, you can see how something more modern like invoke web request is much more elegant than the older uh, system.net method.